there. Uh, welcome to another session of NTOP Live. My name is Annika Norden and I'm a customer success engineer here at Entopology. Today we're going to be looking into a pretty quick workflow on how to design 3D printed ceramic molds for investment casting. And so some of you might be familiar with investment casting, some of you not so much. Uh, I'll kick it off with a disclaimer that I am not an expert in investment casting, but I think because of that, that's kind of a testament as to how this simple workflow really has a lot of power. So someone like me who doesn't know as much within the world of investment casting can quickly create a workflow like this that will save a lot of time within investment casting. So um, for those not as familiar, investment casting is often used within the automotive and aerospace industries for um, creating, for the manufacturing of metal parts. And within that process, uh, it's a pretty involved process. Um, and since people have started 3D printing these ceramic molds, that has very uh, quickly expedited that process, made it a little bit simpler, a little bit simpler, um, a little bit more cost effective. Um, and by introducing end topology and bringing that into play in some uh, quick automated workflow like this, um, can even take that to the next level in making things a little bit speedier and um, more efficient. Um, but in this case, um, we're actually going to be building this whole workflow together um, so that you can all see just how simple it is and how quick it is as well. Um, we're going to be working with this impeller here. Um, for those of you that have taken our NTOP Essentials, uh, you're familiar with this impeller. Um, but through this workflow, taking this impeller, um, using these different types of bodies to then um, come up with this, this simple mold here. Um, I'll do a nice section cut so you can kind of see where we're going from there. Um, again, this is a very simple version. Um, so from here, we could either bring that back to CAD, do a little bit more playing around with, or actually do some um, changes within the software as well. So let me just grab onto a new instance. Actually, this instance I have here already has the part, this impeller imported. So this could be an impeller if you're playing with this workflow here or perhaps on any kind of geometry that you're working with um, and, and hoping to make the mold for. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is double click and right click so I can convert the CAD body to an implicit body. And that's just gonna take a second. What, for those not familiar with implicit bodies, what's happening here is we're taking this CAD body that has these faces and edges and surfaces um, and bringing it into the implicit world, uh, the end top world, where we have instead this field representation of our body. So after that conversion, if I isolate this view, you can see we don't have those edges anymore. Um, you might notice a little bit of edges along here. That's just because I'm working in low resolution right now, just so we can have quick rendering, but we do have clean edges acting in the background here. So I'm actually gonna go in here and change that name. So this, I'm gonna call it my imported part, so we can very easily keep track of our parts here. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab onto an offset part block. Oops, offset body. Um, and I can bring this body, I can uh, decide the offset, in this case, maybe just a five millimeter offset for those uh, who have a little bit more knowledge of investment casting, you know those exact offsets that are necessary when you're creating these ceramic molds. Um, I'm just gonna throw in five for now. And we can see that we quickly just offset all of the features there, right? Um, you see there might still be a little hole in there um, and you've got some edges that might be kind of blending in together. So although we have this nice offset here, um, this part in itself might be a little bit tough for manufacturing um, and for printing because you still got a lot of the details. But when we're working with that, that molds, then we can eliminate some of those details as long as we're holding on to the structure on the inside. So what I'm gonna do, let's make this a variable as well. I'm gonna double click so I can rename it. This is gonna be my offset part. Um, and if I type in smoothen here, you'll see we do have some smoothening functions. We can smoothen a body, we can smoothen a field, or we can smoothen a voxel grid. So I could just take this implicit body and smoothen it from there. But I know that the voxel grid has a little bit more flexibility. So I'm actually going to convert um, my body. So this 
voxel grid from implicit bodies so that we can actually turn this um, into a voxel grid. So for those not familiar with that, this is just a different type of structure, right? So we were working with this field-based um, implicit body here. Now, once we have it as, as, um, as a voxel grid, um, it's a little bit different because we have these voxels creating that structure. But because of that, because we have these um, this grid behind the scenes, then that's going to make it easy, uh, have a little more flexibility when it comes to the smoothening from there. So we have the voxel grid from implicit body. What I'm going to do next is type in smoothening again. This time we're going to go with the voxel grid. And I can bring that voxel grid right in. Um, here we have the filter that I was talking about, right? So not a, a mathematician here, but you'll see we have a few different methods that we can work along to actually smooth in um, these grid, this, uh, this voxel grid. I'm actually gonna bump up iterations so you can see it smoothens a little bit more per iteration. That width is just gonna have to do with the grid that we're smoothing along. But I think this looks pretty good. You'll see we eliminated that hole in the middle. Um, we've got a little bit of a different structure around um, each of these struts here um, that's going to make it a little bit easier for the 3D printing process. And so if this is all we need to do with an NTOP, um, I could quickly actually turn this into a CAD part itself, bring that back into the CAD world where maybe you have uh, your specific steps when it comes to um, creating these casts. So I'll just, um, some of you might be familiar with this back to CAD functionality. I'm just going to do a really quick version so we can see how um, fast we can actually do this. Actually, first, let's make this a variable. I'm going to double click. This is going to be called the first smooth part. So next up, I'm going to actually grab a match from voxel grid. And so you'll notice I'm actually doing a lot of different, dealing with a lot of different types of bodies, right? I have this CAD body to start, working with implicit bodies, working with a voxel grid, and now a mesh. Um, and so I think that's definitely something good to focus on with an NTOP because with these different body types, we have different functionality. Um, and so sometimes you have to jump from one type to the other, but luckily conversion with an NTOP is pretty simple. So next up, I'm going to make a quad mesh. And then I'm going to grab onto the CAD body from mesh block. And we'll let that run for a second. What we're doing here is actually taking a mesh, um, placing quads on that mesh, as you can see with this block here, um, and then reading in those quads to lay down a patchwork. So this here is actually now a CAD body that I can export um, as a parasolid or a step file. Bring that back into the CAD world, whatever traditional CAD software you were working in, um, and then add in those features and run from there. Um, Maybe that's when you're adding in your risers and your runners and, and uh, whatever structure is necessary. But so just wanted to show off how simple it is to bring that back into the CAD environment. Um, but maybe we want to still play around a little bit more with an end top. So let's see. Let's keep my notebook nice and clean. So I'm going to change that name, make it a variable. Also, let's close some of these up. More real estate on our notebook. Um, but what I can do now is actually, so with this smooth part we have here, you'll see we're still a voxel grid. So let's bring that back into the implicit world. So implicit body from voxel grid. And I can bring this smooth part right down here. That's going to take a second to load. Now we see we have it ready to go as an implicit. So now that it's implicit, we can very simply work with our Boolean operations, right? So we're making a mold of that original part. So Let's actually subtract away that part. So I'm going to grab onto Boolean subtract. My primary body is going to be this main body here, right? Um, if I do a section cut here, you'll notice that we've just got the outer section, right? Because we turned it into a voxel grid and did that offset and smoothening there. So let's actually cut out that inner part. So the imported part is what we're focusing on now. I can cut that right out. And then we'll see. We can quickly just remove that from the inside. That'll just take a second to run. Let's make this a variable as we wait. And so this is going to be our mold here. Isolate that view. And now if I do a nice section cut, you can see that we have that 
inner impeller cut from this mold now. And so we can do a lot of different things from here, right? If we wanted to do more of that, uh, a little bit more work with an end top, then we could add some kind of ribbing along this to, to give it a little bit of structural support. We could look into creating support structures or maybe risers and runners. Um, if you stay tuned with some of these end top lives, then maybe in a future one, we can dive into more of this process together. But um, from here, you, you see how quickly we started from this initial impeller did a nice little offset, smoothened it up so um, we're uh, ignoring some of those initial details um, and cleaning it up from there, but while maintaining some of that similar offset value. And then we're really easily able to um, cut that body out from there and, and generate that mold. So a lot of potential from here. Um, but as far as automating this and making it super simple so we can bring in any kinds of part from there, it's just a matter of maybe opening up some of these blocks and, and discovering which variables or which inputs we think are important. So we already saw how I made these variables, um, these blocks into variables, but we can also make these inputs into variables too, right? So this distance, maybe we want that as a variable. So this is going to be our initial box set. Um, and then as far as our smoothening, maybe this iteration is something that's important. So, smooth iterations. So as we bump that up, that's going to change along the way. And perhaps um, what else might be important? Looking at this voxel size that we're creating this voxel. But of course, also this CAD body here um, is going to be important as well because the way that we automate this is by um, kind of emptying this out, identifying these different important aspects here um, and then pulling up as inputs so that when we're, when we're running through this, when we have multiple parts that we want to apply this process to, we can very quickly import a new part, define that part as this imported CAD body, and then play around with maybe the offset, some of the smoothness iterations and things from there, and then very quickly be able to um, export that, whether it's as this CAD body that we've talked about, maybe we want to export it as a mesh depending on whatever software we're bringing into next. Um, but then being able to get that out of the software back into whatever design process you're working in um, to, to really automate that process and, and go through that, um, go on in those next steps within the investment casting um, to really speed things up from there. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Um, Stay tuned for more end top lives. Maybe in a future one, I'll go into more of the details as far as uh, risers and runners, creating supports, creating that structural ribbing as well. Um, but that's it for our short little demo for today. Thanks for joining. I um, hope to see you all at future end top lives as well.